Today is December 16th, and the Yankees have brought back Brett Gardner. They've lost Didi Gregorius. They've lost Austin Romine, and they are bringing back Adam Warren. How about that? We also have a really fun conversation with Jack Curry live from Winter Meetings. Let's talk Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy. John Boy and Jake. Caps galore for weekly awards. Stat lines, steaming hot takes. Your Yankees news with these two fine dudes. It's time for Talking Yanks. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. Talking Yanks with old John Boy, John Boy and Jake. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Talking Yanks. Episode number 369. I am one of your hosts, John Boy, coming to you from New York City, and I've got my co host and best friend coming to you from Denver, Colorado, wearing a shirt I've never seen him wear before. Interested to find out what it is. His name's Jake Story Alley. How you doing, Jake? You're going to feel like a fool. You're going to feel like a fool in a second, Jim. You own this same shirt. Oh yeah, I haven't. I didn't put it on. La Vida Baseball. Hey, I'm wearing their hat. Big shout outs from La Vida I Baseball. Know you are. They had us on their show, Julie and Jennifer. Super nice. So uh, La Vida Baseball. How about that? Also, we'll you're also out. you're wearing your Easton hat. So we're just wearing all the free garb we get from places we go. <laughs> Dude, this this may sound braggy. I don't know. We're we've definitely entered full free garb territory. Of of whatever we're doing in the baseball world, and it's becoming a problem. <laughs> my my drawers haven't shut in a couple weeks, and it's like, I mean, it's not in a great way. Like it's it's definitely not a braggy way. Roosevelt's, I've got some powerful shirts. This La Vida baseball, Easton. So been a crazy couple weeks. Good to talk Yanks. Coach Ball game, give a shirt. Yeah, thank you everyone that tuned in last episode. It was easily our most downloaded episode. Of course, everyone's excited because the Yankees got Cole. We were excited. Super fun episode to record live from winter meetings after having a couple sips of wine. So that's awesome. And hopefully a bunch of you listened and that was your first episode and you're uh, hanging around for more We got a lot to talk about. We have an interview from Winter Meetings that's going to be part of this episode. But first, let me tell you who's bringing you this show. Show It is Derek Fern, Joseph Herman, spelled with an H and two N, so different from Domingo. Thomas Risley, Carson Grover, (coughs) Matt Mike. That's a weird name. Matt Mike. Mike's his last name. Love it. Matt Mike. Mike Matt. Sam Abramson. A Brant Abramson, Nicholas Mon- Monaco, and Jaime Sanchez. Well, thank you. Those are our most recent Patreon subscribers and supporters. It's two dollars a month, and I just hooked everyone that supports us on Patreon up. I gave them the Netflix version of our winter meetings. I put every interview that we did that's going to eventually be on this podcast up for the patrons on YouTube. They can. They can listen to them, and they will be on the show. So we have Jack Curry has already been up. It'll be part of this episode. Brian Hoke, he'll be a future episode. That one's up. Phil Hughes, that'll be a future episode. Phil Nevin, that'll be a future episode. Marley Rivera, Meredith Morakovitz, those are all uh, already up for the patrons to binge listen to, and they will be part of, you know, if you don't want to be a patron, we get it. If you can't afford it, that's fine. It'll be part of this podcast. It's not secret content, but early access goes to the patrons who I genuinely love because they support us. So thank you. Go do that. Thanks, Patreons. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Jim, did you hear the the Cole recruiting detail that leaked out today that ties into our last episode? Wine. Fetch me my wine. Yeah. How about that? Full circle. Cole and his pops are big wine guys and supposedly Booney brought up, hey, this is a pretty nice mall back. Maybe you guys will like this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that I mean, full the the Garrett Cole signing is just surrounded by different wine. Fetch me my wine. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, because we did Garrett Cole, we touched on DD a little bit. We didn't really touch on DD fully, but I think we have some thoughts there because kind of said like 
uh, in last episode, uh, all we basically said was we knew it was coming, so we're not devastated. But Didi deserves more than that. Didi went from being booed and people chanted Derek Jeter at, a, at him uh, when he replaced Jeter, and he was the worst base runner I ever saw, and he couldn't get out of his own way, to being beloved and kind of he was one of the true branches from that 2014, 2015 weird, kind of old, kind of like not our Yankees to beloved 2017, 2018 teams. So, I mean, you got to appreciate him for bridging that gap and everything. Uh, I, I didn't think he was coming back. So I kind of made up, made, I had my, I got an over that. So some people were like sad. I had already done that. Um, Wish him the best. I'm really happy he took a one year deal and didn't take a, a multi year offer for you know a low AAV and he's taking a prove it prove it year and hopefully he gets big money next free agency. Yeah, and it's uh, I mean it's kind of a tough break for Didi. A lot of a lot of Yankee eyes have been feeling bad for Dellen, which I, I mean you can too. But Dellen actually he he might get a nice little contract with the lack of relief pitching out there. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, Didi classic sports saying you never want to be the guy after the guy and he was <laughs> he was he was the guy after like the dude Derek Jarek Dieter and yeah man I, I think it kind of goes overlooked like this dude batted third a lot for us he he played a really quality defensive shortstop he ends up having a fairly bizarre injury for a field player unfortunately us Yankee fans are kind of used to it now with Glaber and Hicksy. he played he played through it in the postseason as well played through it and like clearly you look back and be like yeah something was definitely up huh so yeah it's weird Didi uh there's kind of some weird vibes because of like he played in the playoffs with the injury but he played poorly and then this year you know the numbers weren't where they have been so it is cool that he's betting on himself he is a player that does need to benefit a little bit from a hitter's park and Philadelphia has that for him as well uh he's got a manager he's very familiar with with Joe Girardi so happy for Didi yeah I know and I forget if we said it on air with Curry, but Jack Curry was like, you know, he he was saying if Didi hit free agency and he had a normal Didi year, you could see a guy like that approach a hundred million. He's betting on himself. It'll be cool to see uh, if he could put it together in Philly what he could do on the open market. Yeah, and we had heard that you know he may he may he had offers that were may have been higher numbers, but he really wanted the one year to prove it, and he really liked get back together with Girardi, which. You know, yeah, we, we heard we heard that from a trusted source, which just goes to show like so many people still hang on that like Girardi lost the clubhouse because that's how they had to sell moving on when really it just needed to change, change the guard because it had been 10 years. And think about it. I, I mean, you and I, we, we spin our wheels a lot, whether it's here or talking baseball on, you know, guys are going to take the most money um, and 90 percent of the time that's the case. But you know, the 10% of the time you run into a situation like Didi where you want to bet on yourself so you can make more money next time. And, I mean, like, think about that. The familiarity with Didi. He doesn't have to learn a new coach or anything like that. He's he's going to go in there. He knows what he's getting into. Um, so that's big for him. Or if you're Madison Bumgarner, you have your horses in Arizona. So Topper's still with the Phillies too, right? Like, so it's Joe and Rob Thompson? I believe so, so yeah, a couple right? familiar faces for him there. Jack, Jack Curry uh, just said on the hot stove show that he thinks Dellen's going to go somewhere else. So that's that's a bummer. I was really hoping if Dellen's going to get a one-year deal from someone, I was really hoping the Yankees would give it to him. Yeah, I'm interested to see. Uh, with, with the lack of relief pitching on the market, I'm wondering if it's like a, a one-year with a, a good-size option for the next year or what that looks like. Because uh, I don't know. I mean, teams are interested in Dellen, and he uh, – like I said with Didi, who's who's being <laughs> a little overshadowed by Dellen, it's like, damn. I mean, he uh, he could be cleaning up right now, and instead he is in a weird spot. So uh, interested to see see how that sorts out. Are we rooting for the Phillies or not rooting for the Phillies to get Dellen? Not. Okay. Honestly, it would just be like, I don't like the little reunion teams. Like, I wouldn't like okay. being a Colorado Rockies fan and seeing four guys on the same team. That's just me personally. It is okay. kind of cool. Like, I can understand why you would be like, I like it. They're all together. And then, but then I feel like I have to root for the Phillies. There's too many guys on there. I understand it, but 
I'd rather him go to some random team. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of in on it. Flip over to the Phillies game. It's the eighth inning. See Didi, Dellen, Girardi. That's a good time. Oh, wait. So now Carl Daniel is reporting to me that Jack is saying on Hot Stove that he thinks it's the Mets or the Phillies. I'd rather him go to the Mets than the Phillies. I'd rather him go to the Phillies than the Mets. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there. Uh, another guy that is leaving that has been around for a while. I think he's been around for longer in the organization than Didi for sure is Austin Romine. This dude is going to Detroit one year, $4.1 million. He's going to get a chance to be their starting catcher because they're the worst team in baseball with no future really. And they just need stopgap players and veteran presences. They had his brother, Andrew Romine for a while. So maybe they're used to the family. You know what? I, I knew this was probably going to happen as well because like, I, the, the phrase I've been using is Higashioka is an itch that the Yankees want to scratch. <laughs> they want to see what they got there and give them the shot as the backup, especially since Higgy's out of options. So you knew just like lo- logically like it doesn't make any sense for them to bring Romine back. I just didn't know if he was really not going to get any money on the free agency market, then it makes sense. Like Just match it, whatever. We'll see. He gets, he gets pretty paid for Romine for a backup catcher and he gets the chance to be a starting catcher and if he does really well with the Tigers for one year then maybe that's his chance to go get a starting job somewhere else another like prove it contract for Romine I don't know kind of like thanks Ro is uh it's very odd because like his 2017 he couldn't hit at all 2018 he could hit but he did have all these qualities that endeared himself to me and the fans he was always good at talking after games constant dirt on his face did get in the fight with miggy the yankees talk about him so highly so i'm not like incredibly sad to see romine go but then when you really think about it you're like well he was in an organization for 10 years he's been here for so long and then you get all like nostalgic about something that you didn't think you were going to be nostalgic about yeah i mean it's it's insane and i think it's i think it's closer to 12 years because he joined the yankees out of high school i mean he he played in nine games in 2011 for the New York Yankees. He played in 60 games in 2013. He was a big prospect. It kind of just didn't happen for him, and that's that's baseball Susan. And then he turned into this, like, kind of your dream backup catcher. He's, like, the most liked dude on the team. He can put together a, a, a couple nice hitting streaks. I mean, he ends up hitting 281 this year with a 748 OPS, which in the catching world ain't too shabby. I know... Uh, you and I befriended some uh, some of the Yankees analytics guys, and we had a, we had a couple fun conversations about Romine. Whether and it was kind of funny. I mean, those guys were pretty split. Like, hey, maybe he can put it together for a hundred plus games for a baseball team and and be a nice starter. Some of the other guys were a little up up in the air about it. Uh, if you're the Tigers, I mean, why not? Um, if he put something together, maybe you flip him at the deadline or. Um, you get just get a nice year out of him. So uh, we bid him adieu. We wish him the best. And uh, yeah, the, the Higashioka thing is interesting because those same Yankees dudes we chatted with at winter meetings, uh, you know, they were talking pitch framing and we have the new catching coach um, and Higashioka is out of options. So everyone's everyone was kind of on the Maldonado thing for a little bit, which I guess I'm not ruling out, but I, it just feels like the Yankees aren't going to punt on Higashioka. Um, but if they sign someone, they'd have to. So I don't know. What if they get Maldonado? Uh, because if you don't know, Maldonado was Cole's personal catcher and he's does really good with them. What if they get Maldonado and they put him on the, they like sign him to a minor league contract. No one else offers him anything else. Higgy starts. They see if Cole can pitch to Gary, see if Cole can pitch to Higgy. And if it all comes crashing down, then they're like, all right, Maldonado, you're up. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm still expecting Maldonado to get major league offers, so I don't think that's an option. But maybe, um, yeah. For for me, it's a weird catch twenty two where I mean, Gary Sanchez has an injury history at this point. Catchers, um, I think there was only seven catchers that played 120 games last year. So you want, I mean, if if you have to play Higashioka 50 games, I think you're fine with that. Uh, Romine's played what 70 plus the last three years. I I think that gets me into a little bit of a scary territory with Higster. Um, 
So I don't know. That's uh, I I don't have a pulse on that to be honest. I could if they signed Maldonado tomorrow, I wouldn't be shocked. If they came in and rolled with Higgy, I wouldn't be either. Yeah, I think they're gonna roll with Higgy, but they should get some depth because Higgy's out of options and. I don't know. Injuries happen. Like, who's their third right now? Do they have a AAA catcher? Because for a while they didn't. It ended at Higgy. Yeah, I mean, they're they're gonna invite someone to camp. I can try to bring up the the free agent catchers quick. Um, that's not a combo. We really I'm, need I'm to sh- deep dive into. Yeah, <laughs> that's a string that's a, catcher. Check, we can skip that. Check one. it. Yeah, check check <laughs> out. Uh, Check out talking baseball if you if you think you might be into into something like that. Hey, Jim, you know who is out there? Who's that? Your guy Cervelli. <laughs> I don't know if you can bring Cervelli in uh, on a minor league deal. I think he might just rather oh. like bathe in cologne and sip wine than come play in the minor leagues. Hey, you and me both, sister. All right, moving on. They bring back Gardy. We all knew it was going to happen. I think on this upcoming interview with uh, Jack Curry, we say, like, Gardy's going to be the next move. And he was. We actually ran into yeah. Gardner's agents at uh, winter meetings. They said they were big fans. I said, tell Gardner what a podcast is, then tell him to come on. They said, oh, oh, oh I don't know. Uh, but yeah. we're like, yeah, Gardy doesn't have any social media, so we text him your videos of him. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool, thank you. They were they were really nice guys, but they were there working it out. And it was like right after Cole and we were like, so you're good now. And they're like, yeah, trying to give him the best deal. And they got him a, a pretty nice deal. And Gardner got it for himself having a good season last year. Uh, I was going to like any deal really to bring Gardner back. So I'm happy that, you know, both both sides found something and a way to do it. It is a little tricky. Uh, he gets twelve point five million dollars of guaranteed money. The way it's split up, I find interesting. There's a $2 million signing bonus. So Gardner gets that as soon as he uh, pens his name on the paper. Then they're paying him $8 million for 2020 season. $8 million. Then if they don't want him back for 2021, there's a $2.5 million buyout. So that's the guaranteed money. A $2 million signing bonus, $8 million salary, that comes to ten, two point five million $2.5 million buyout, that comes to twelve point five guaranteed money. So the AAV on this, I believe, is $10 million. Because I think the signing bonus counts keep, towards the AAV. Yeah, I keep flipping, flopping on it. I've seen 10 and I've seen 12 and a half, but yeah. So yeah, I don't know what it is. And then if he has a really good 2000 if he has a really good 2020 and they want him back for 2021, there's a 10 million buy-in. So he'd be getting $10 million next year. What I like it, you know, Hicks is hurt and Hicks is kind of fucking, I'm nervous about Hicks's health. Obviously everyone should be Gardner's been a constant player. Like he will give you the games. They're trying their best to get him out of some games so they can keep him a little healthier but he can play center field still. He can be that intensely in the lineup still. He's just struggle with the bat every now and then. Dude, his like if you're into war, and I know that sometimes I'm into it and sometimes I'm not, and I think that's how everyone views war, Gardner's like really valuable. <laughs> it, the defense and the offense and the, the entire game and the base running, when you combine all of them, he's really, really valuable. I think if he wasn't on the Yankees, he'd be more uh, talked about. But the pinstripes actually kind of dull him down, and his teammates kind of dull him down. I think if he's a ten-year Kansas City Royal, he's he's talked about a little better. Yeah, it's it's an interesting mix because I know you and I have run into the Cole Calhoun comparison a little bit, and I think that's semi-similar. And I think they're they're kind of viewed in similar lights around baseball. I don't know, um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you look, twenty eighteen is kind of the outlier. Uh, the past. Um, I mean, the past seven seasons, he's played 140 plus games for the New York Yankees, uh, which is insane. Um, and then, yeah, 2012 was the year he had his injury. If you go back further than that, I mean, the guys played basically uh, 140 plus games, nine out of 10 years. Um, yeah. And if, if he does what he does, what he did last year or 2017 or or hell, 2015, I mean, they're going to pick up that option. Uh, and he'll be back. It's going to be interesting to see how how Brett Gardner's career winds down. A lot of people thought it was over the year before. 
Um, I'm not going to write off Uncle Brett until uh, uh, until the fat lady sings. But yeah, and uh, again, you have to appreciate like he played so much center field at age 35 last year. He, he had w- one of the more productive center field seasons. And, you know, we do all this. We, we just mentioned Didi going to Philly, betting on himself. Uh, other free agents are taking the best offer. Like, there were teams that probably wanted to give Brett Gardner more money for what he did last year, but it was kind of known around baseball. Like, hey, he's staying in New York, which that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, we asked someone, and, like, they're like, hey, is Gardner going to come back? Someone that would know, and they were like, he's not playing for anyone else, I can tell you that. And it was, like, as, as simple as yeah. that. Why would you want to? Yeah. yeah. In 2010, Brett Gardner had more B-War than Christian Yelich did this year. That's weird, huh? Boom. Yeah. Good for Guardy. I'm excited about that one. I was I was nervous to lose like Dellen, CeCe, and Guardy in one fell swoop. Kind of a veteran in every facet of the game. Line up, starting and relieving. I, and it's not yeah, even like I don't think their presence is that much felt. It's more just for me personally. Like they they have I have memories attached to those guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean you look you look at the first games Romine played and then you look at that lineup and it's like is this lineup from two thousand one or twenty twenty eleven? But um, yeah, it's 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 good to have Guardy back. Um, I, I think the leadership stuff is interesting because, you know, CC obviously his presence and, and the way he goes about everything. Uh, I feel like Gardy, you know, he's a prankster, but he's also a lead by example guy. Like you're not going to outwork Brett Gardner and bring it day to day like he does. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good he's still there. And th- it's kind of another year to pass the torch to Judge, Glaber, Gary, those guys. Yeah, uh, dude, so this opens up two slots on the 40-man. Now, I haven't looked into this. Have they done anything about this yet? Or have they not officially had to add Cole and Gardner? Uh, They haven't officially had to add them yet, so something is going to happen. Interesting, because now that's two guys that have to be moved. Yeah, our our buddy Joe's was was, uh, banging the drum the other day because he's like, I mean, something has to happen, and there are the guys that could go, and I think we mentioned this in the Curry interview, t- too. I mean, Chance Adams is still on the team, um, and I think there was one other major outlier that we were like, yeah, the, the, the Yankees could be expendable with that person, but yeah, you'd like you'd like to see a, a cute little Cashman trade sneak up, or hell, how about not a cute one? Yeah. <laughs> Bring I'm, the hammer, daddy. Yeah. Or he just drops someone. So this is what I was referencing. From 2013 to 2019, Gardner has more war than Bryce Harper. Yeah. Isn't that in, you know, just because he plays so much and he does it on three sides of the game? Yeah. He, uh, he's, he's racked up, I mean, 12 and a half, <laughs> 12 and a half career defensive war is, is pretty wild. But, and he's, he's just out there and plays. Like, that's... Um, I don't know. It's been a kick I've been on for a little while now, but I mean, if you're healthy and playing, like people forget how valuable that is. And that's part of Bryce Harper's problem. Yeah. Yeah. And Hicks. So, so where do we have, oh, I was going to say this, maybe Chance Adams gets bumped from the 40 man and the Yankees basically just brought in, uh, the better version of Chance Adams, which is Adam Warren. He's back. Little caveat, he's not going to pitch at all in 2020. He just got Tommy John and he's hurt. And the Yankees signed him to a two-year minor league contract to give him the rehab year. And then maybe he can help out in 2021. It is funny. He was a Yankee. He gets traded to the Cubs. He gets traded back. They trade him to Seattle for nothing. uh, Some money. Now would they bring him back again? And I think I kind of like this move, even if the Yankees don't anticipate him like being a part of 2021. Just like, you know what, Warren, we'll pay for you to rehab so you get another shot at this thing. We like you. Like, we've, 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 we've fucked with you enough. We'll be the nice guy. Yeah. You, uh, you're you familiar with the facilities, right? You know, get get healthy. If you could throw a couple bullets for us in 2021, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, if not, we, we bid you adieu. But, yeah, I mean, are, are we going to be shocked at all if in 2021 – uh, Adam Warren is out there twirling to the tune of a three, five ERA. And when we're up five runs, like, nope, I've, I've seen that. 
I've seen that every other year for the past five years, it feels like. Well, yeah, could use a, a, a good mop-up guy. I feel like we haven't had a good, like, solid mop-up guy in a while. Slash Cecil was, but we couldn't turn our brains on for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Adam Warren is a weird pitcher, man. He's Swiss Army knife, and, like, every blade was dull, but they still got the job done. He's like the worst pitcher to have in a two-run game, like the best pitcher to have in a five-run game. Yeah. Oh, good for Warren. He's back. Back in pinstripes. Back. All right, so let's do a, a little, like, what is what is the roster and the lineup as of now? And then we'll, Ooh. and then, yeah, so we got Judge in right field, Gardner in center field, Stanton in left field, until Hicksie's healthy. Uh, I have Talkman as the fourth outfielder. We got Geo at third. Glaber at short, DJ at second, Voight at first. They did come out and say it's Voight's job out of spring training. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be a competition or anything. If he's healthy, it's his. That's good. I'm happy they they said that and put the confidence in Voight right away. You got Gary behind the dish. You have Andujar there and Wade as the 26th man and Higgy as the backup catcher. So that makes a bench of Talkman, Andujar, Higgy, Wade. Who you got DHing? Andy Hard DHing with Stanton in left. Okay, so you'd prefer that over Talkman in left, Stanton DHing? You can do that too. I think you can I think you can swirl that around. I don't think, you know, it needs to be one or the other. Obviously they don't run out the same lineup every day, but those are the two main options. Yeah, and I guess you could do a little bit of platoon stuff there, although Talkman was great versus lefties. Um Talkman's something I haven't wrapped my head around because, again, you you and I, I, I forget if we did this with Curry or Hoke, but there was that month and a half where he was the second best player in the American League. Uh, so it's going to be interesting if he if he reaches into that bag of tricks again. I mean, at, at this point, uh, like I have Talkman and Andujar getting at bats, uh, however it sorts out. Um, it will be interesting. I mean, do we think... Like another infield option is going to be brought in? Right now, you just have Wade as a backup infielder. Right. Uh, you some A lot of people are probably counting Andujar, but I'm not really. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. If he improved, we'll see. They keep showing us his swing. I know his swing's good. Someone gets hurt. Yeah, th- I think they're going to have to build up their depth a little bit, just like they did last year. So I imagine that we might get some weird trades for guys that were like, huh, he's going to AAA? Okay. Yeah. Or not. You might get another Vic reliever. Valera. I mean, the, the rotation's pretty fucking awesome. You got Cole, Paxton, Severino, Tanaka, Hap slash Gumby, um, Herman, if he's back from being suspended or whatever. And then they probably will still try to trade Hap if someone's interested. And the market now with so many pitchers getting signed and Kluber getting traded, there's a lot of teams out there still looking for pitchers. And if there's someone that believes in Hap, they might just do it. Yeah. Hey, in September Hap, you know, I'm all about that. Um, I, that's another one I have no idea. I, I just, you know, you guys come here for your Yankees insight. I got nothing for you. Hap's traded tomorrow. Not shocked at all. If Hap throws 159 innings for us, because I think 160 is when his option kicks in. I'm not surprised. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. But that's what I got. All right. Uh, Cole's presser is on Wednesday. That should be fun. He's got a dude. A lot of people bringing up this shaving thing. Like he's gonna shave. He has to shave. That's those are the rules. Do you think it'll ever change in our lifetime? Uh, no, I hope not. Okay. It's it's like no one's bigger than that rule. I don't care what the rule is. It could be that you have to wear you know pink socks when you play. As long as there's something that when you join the team, you got to fall in. I think it's. I think that's what makes it a, a, a positive thing. Is that like when CC and Pettit are sharing ways of how to grow their five o'clock sh- stubble so they can feel like warriors on the mound? That's like them doing some secret galvanizing stuff. Like that's like how you build relationships in a locker room, and it's just like that's what you do when you join the Yankees. No one has been bigger than it, so no one's going to be bigger yeah. than it. 
I'm 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 interested to see. I mean, it's kind of the millennial way to to question things. Like I forget what was you and I got into a, a bicker this season. It was something about home runs or circling the bases or something. I forget. And you were saying like, why does that have to be there? And I kind of said like, it's in the rules. It's it's been in the rules. Keep it. Roll with it. And you were saying why? I think people are starting to do that with the beard thing. I don't want to see it go. I personally like it, but I I don't know. Like I wouldn't. I'm too wishy-washy this episode. I need hot takes, but I, I don't know. Like it, It's getting kind of loud that I could see at some oh, point the Yankees no. being like, fuck it. Oh, honestly, like this is uh, there's certain things that make the, the boomer in me come out. These sure. like young kids that are like crying about the rule, I can't help. I'm just like, oh, my God, you guys are so soft to use internet talk. I don't really, I yeah. don't really use that phrase. If you're honestly crying about Garrett Cole not being able to have his stubble on his face, like you're so soft. What about when your your beard got shaved? I, I mean, if I was playing for the Yankees, I would shave my beard. I did it for a bet. Wow, rumor. It's just no. Rumor. It's just so stupid. <laughs> People are like bring to the Yanks. New York made it illegal for uh, for. Employers to make yeah. their employees shave. Shut up. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the generation we're living. This dude tweeted me, for, for sake of argument, and I was like, oh, I'm going to stop you right there. Why would I want to do that? No. Nope. Why would we? Wait? Hey, nope. for sake of argument, fuck you. It's like, oh, look, cool. For, for, for sake of argument, fuck you too. Like, why Why would you ever start a conversation for fa- for sake of argument? Like, not interested, man. Yeah. Not, not trying to argue just to argue. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hardest of passes. Yeah. Hard no. Hard no. For sake of not arguing, I'm going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reply. Yeah. Jim, I do... Uh, I, I do have to give a mini shout out. You you got me added to a Yankees Twitter group chat this week. You're actually in it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I uh, I was added to the Talk and Wanks group chat. Um, oh, the, the, uh, <laughs> I didn't know what Talk yeah. and Wanks stood for when Frankie tweeted that. What does it stand for? Uh, talk and I meet. Yeah, I'll I'll let you put two plus two together. But uh, yeah, it started with a, a lot of Yankees of ladies Twitter. Um, Jimmy threw my hat in the ring. They they kindly added me. Um, it it it's kind of a wild space, man. There's there's a lot of like uh, a lot of love being spread. A lot of a lot of you go and pumping each other up, and I love it. And uh, uh, it's also you know a, some don't be creepy on Twitter. People are sending out pics of their pics of their biscuits and stuff. And uh, yeah, just don't do that, people. Yeah, don't do that yeah so yeah there was a uh, ladies of yankees twitter dm and i just was i was wondering why you weren't in there uh as was i um (laughs) kind of kind of offended offended at the start but uh yeah and i i know uh we in our earlier stages we had some of our listeners that were like why do you guys reference the twitter stuff if you're not involved in yankees twitter honestly check it out like i i wasn't a big twitter guy but it really is a community and like dude i i was the dude on aol and aim that was just i don't know talking sports in different places i could and this was awesome i mean we got friendships forming and stuff um yes i did have to put it on mute because they're sending about a hundred messages a minute um but yeah go uh go talk and wanks Yep. And we're out. Go Yanks. Tell them Grams. No, not yet. Be on the lookout for all the podcasts. Like, I don't know what their holiday plan is. I know that some of the interviews we have are long uh, and the patrons can tell you that too, because they're already up. So if there's more news, we will do, you know, a reaction and an interview mixed. If there's not a lot of news, you'll probably just get an interview uh, during the holidays and then we'll do a voicemail up here and there as well. We're going to kind of play it by ear, but it'll be the same schedule. Tuesdays and Friday drops. And uh, enjoy it. Thank you guys very much. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. <laughs>